Let's take a look at checking the MISRA C 2012 compliance with the LDRA tool suite. So we'll start by looking at a component of the LDRA tool suite, which is TB Vision. And inside TB Vision, we've loaded some source code. This is some source code that I've obtained from the web. And I've gone and selected a particular coding standard that is the MISRA C 2012. I've done an analysis on this code and now let's take a look at the results. We'll start by looking at a summary report and there we can see well this code was not designed to be compliant and so we have over 5,000 violations. And the most important violations are the mandatory standards and there we can see we have four standards that have been violated. Let's take a, a closer look at these. And there we can see some of the violations that we've we've found. Well, let's take a look at uh, a couple of these. This one looks interesting. Attempt to use uninitialized pointer. Well, let's see what Misra says about this. Let's double click. And there we can see rule 9.1 is mandatory. The value of an object with automatic storage duration shall not be read before it is being set. And this MISRA rule is undecidable, which means that statically it's not always possible to determine if there is or is not a violation. Well, let's take a, a closer look. Let's double click and we'll go to the first place where this occurs. And there we can see we have a declaration of a pointer to avoid. It's not been initialized. But then a little later on, we're passing it here to this, well, it looks like a macro. Have we analyzed that macro? Well, maybe we haven't analyzed it in enough detail. We haven't gone enough depth into this to understand exactly what this is doing with this variable. And so it could possibly be that it is using it before it's initialized. So rather than just hiding a problem, we'll say, well, this is possibly somewhere where you should do some manual code review and verify that there really is no problem. OK. So let's take a look at something else. Let's go down and there we can see we have a, a lot of violations concerning signed and unsigned. Should never mix signed and unsigned. There are always potential problems that can occur. Let's go down a bit further and here we have comment possibly contains code. Well, let's take a look at this. Again, we'll do another code review. This time we can see a couple of places where this occurs. Let's double click and take a look here. In this case, well, that definitely is a comment that's been, or code that's been commented out. Definitely something that we really need to avoid because it's always difficult to know, well, why has that been commented out? Is that something that was done for, for debug? But why is it there? Okay, let's take a look at uh, another place here. Inside this file, again, we have more occurrences of this. Let's double click. And here we can see, well, in this particular case, well, it looks like it could well be a comment. But how do we actually identify using an algorithm that that is a comment and not code that's been commented out? And that's one of the reasons why this is a directive and not a rule. OK, so finally, let's take a, a look and see how this code compares to the other MISRA standards. So in this case, let's go and look at a MISRA model's comparison graph. And there we can see that, yes, we have over 5,000 violations against the, the MISRA C standard. But if we're trying to do the older MISRA C 2004 standard, we'd actually have over 6,000. Just showing that it's going to be easier in future to get compliance to the new MISRA C 2012 standard. OK, well, if you want further information, then please visit our website where you'll be able to get more information and see further videos on this.